actually it started just a little before that in uh, early December uh, my regiment went on the line in the Kumaw Valley and uh, the uh, into winter quarters really the holding the winter line and uh, I was a Ford observer and uh, I had the forward point of the of that regimental line and uh, our job you know was harass the enemy all the time uh, you know with with fire, uh, and if possible, you know, send out ambush patrols, uh, recon patrols, uh, uh, raiding parties, and whatever against him. Uh, keep him off balance, gather prisoners, blow up his winter installations. And uh, we started a series of deep patrols in, uh, in December, and uh, I went out with the first one, a reinforced platoon uh, of my company, the 38th. Uh, six of us made it back out of 73. Uh, I was the only one who wasn't wounded. Um, fought our way through the, about three, back, through three, three miles of enemy lines and then fought our way back. Well, those that could make it. And contrary to what Colonel Fox believes and I believe, you know, the, the dead and wounded was left behind in a running gunfight. Uh, you couldn't bring them, you know, 20 men can't carry 50. Uh, and it was a very desperate battle, uh, beyond belief. The, uh, we were fighting hundreds, and there was just a handful of us. Uh, we, sent an, we sent another patrol out a few days later, and they were all killed or, killed or wounded. Uh, nobody ever came back. So uh, we went to a reinforced rifle company, and again, I was assigned and as a port observer and with Love Company of the 38th. Uh, our mission was to attack this mountain stronghold uh, and it was covered with Chinese uh, uh, they were all dug in with dozens of machine gun emplacements border everywhere they had uh, artillery dug in for point blank fire against you and uh, the uh, uh, so just before daylight we broke out th through the main line of resistance out around a little outpost out there and I started toward him, and uh, we were immediately picked up long range uh, artillery and mortar fire against us, and they were wrecking us with machine gun fire all the way out. And one of the things that kind of caused us some problems later, the artillery port observer, uh, radio operator, took a burst of a machine gun through the chest, which took his radio out, he was carrying a radio, and it took his radio out. Up to. So the artillery fort observer was out of business, which meant I had the only major fire uh, to support the unit, the company. And uh, the, uh, we dropped off one, one platoon to hit the forward part of the mountain as a kind of diversion to, you know, kind of suck the enemy forward. The, uh, uh, they, uh, they would storm it up the hill there to, you know, to kind of, kind of suck them forward and give us a chance to swing in behind a mountain which is about a mile. We had to double time about a mile through the snow and get in behind a mountain. And uh, the, uh, by the time we started up the mountain, they had already been wiped out. The, uh, the platoon in front of me, the assault platoon, I was right behind the assault platoon with the company commander. And uh, uh, the, they got up to kind of a military crest of this mountain. We had fought our way through the Chinese trenches till we got to this one point. And the Chinese uh, pinned, the, pinned this platoon down and overrun it and killed them all but one man. The, uh, so we're taking casualties very quickly. Uh, and some of us are struggling up the hill and the others are already wiped out. The, uh, so the company commander and I uh, became, what's the next platoon, became the assault platoon. And uh, so we fought our way, we fought our way to up within 50 yards of the top of the mountain. And... Uh, we're getting direct mortar fire and point blank artillery fire directly into us. We're in a we're in a tree line and we're getting air bur tree burst right above us, tearing the guys up. Um, you're out in the open, you still get it. You know they're pounding us really bad. Machine guns are raking us. Uh, enemy hundreds of enemy Chinese are fighting shooting us with submachine guns. And uh, very quickly we went from a reinforced rifle company down to about 35 men. Uh, when I say very quickly, we're talking maybe this whole thing, we're about four hours into the mission now. And uh, the uh, and, and we're still in the morning. <laughs> and 
So uh, the, uh, we, tried, we tried fighting our way up the mountain, and, uh, you know, and we're, t we're losing people, just something fierce. The, uh, finally, I, I get on the radio, and I call my regimental commander, and I give him a situation report, ammunition report, request orders. And he wants to sp I was a corporal at the time, and he wanted to speak to an officer, so I went to the company commander, who was a sole surviving officer, uh, in the company. Our terror report observer was still there, but he was wounded. And, uh, the, we were ordered to make another attempt to take the mountain. The, uh, uh, it, I knew there was no hope. It was just, we were just outnumbered some, something awful. And so the, uh, the company commander said, yes, sir. And, uh, he, uh, I was watching him and he, he got kind of a hopeless look on his face and, uh, uh, I think I made a mistake, kind of a silly mistake, that I, then I, because I wasn't supposed to be doing this kind of thing. I was supposed to be calling in fire on me, which I was at the time. And I said, I'll take him for you, Captain. And he said, how are you going to go? And I said, only, there's only one way, Captain, straight ahead. we gotta, we got to make the trenches or we're not going to make it, get into the trench. And he said, you're not going to make it? I said, yeah, but we're going to try. So uh, the uh, I lined the men up. Uh, told him what we were going to do, and everybody was everybody's going to follow me. I, we needed flank fire, so I took some of the wounded men and put them on the flanks and loaded their weapons, and, and some of these guys fired until they either froze to death or, or were killed. And I took I took what was left of the company straight ahead and uh, into a hail of fire. The, uh, it looked like the whole Chinese army was shooting right at us. Uh, I got, I could have walked on the, on the fire that was coming at me. I got to the, I made it to the trench and I stopped and looked back and I was by myself. The rest of the men behind me had been knocked down. And the, uh, I, I got a funny feeling knowing that, you know, that I was looking at my last day on earth. The, uh, there was no hope of getting out. If I tried to get out, they could hear me because the fire was, from this firefight was slowly dying down. And, uh, uh, I could hear them talking in front of me, uh, right, and I mean within two feet in front of me. The, uh, and they don't know I'm there either. Um, and, uh, so at first I thought about trying to make a run for it and get out, but I knew I couldn't make it. You know, they'd hear me in the snow, this crusty snow. So I, uh, decided I'd, you know, try to knock out the first bunch and maybe I could get out. So I, I got out a wild war hoop there and jumped a straddle of the trench and the, uh, there was eight Chinese crouched down and seven of them in front of me and one behind me. And they were so close, I stuck the, my carbine in one of them's ear and shot him, and right against his ear, too. And the one behind me slammed a burp gun in my back, and he was pulling the trigger. I seen him try, as I tried to turn, he was pulling the trigger. And I just kept screaming in his face, you know, as I turned around, and he, I think he froze, because uh, I got the first shot off, and I, I got him in the neck, and he dropped his burp gun and dove forward and grabbed me by the legs and I hit him with my carbine and knocked him off of me and shot him in the heart and as I turned around the whole bunch of them were they tried to shoot me and but I got my carbine going on automatic and I uh, just raked him and in seconds I had six dead and one wounded the wounded man and another one dove into a big machine gun and bunker right beside of me which I had over actually got in beside of it and uh, there were several Chinese in there and so I fired at the door, driving away from the door, and uh, then crawled on top of the bunker and took a white phosphorus hand grenade, pulled a pin and let the spoon fly, and then reached down and just rolled it in the door. And when it went off, there, there was a lot of screaming going on. Uh, two, two of the Chinese made it out the door, and they were on fire, and I, I shot them in the head. And uh, so all at once here, instead of being a dead man, I'm alive again, you know, and things are, things are kind of going my way. And I thought, well, I've got, I've made it this far, maybe I can hold long enough for the rest of the men to get up here. And I was hollering for the men to come up and give me a hand, and uh, Chinese were throwing hand grenades all at me. And uh, so I went around the trench to see see what was coming, and here come about 35 Chinese charging straight at me. And again, I'm in a bad position. If if I run, I you know they'll just chase me down and kill me. And because I'm by myself, uh, if I stand there and fight, they'll flank me and grenade me. And uh, so uh, I let out another war whoop, and after them I went. And I charged down the trench, and we're heading on kind of a collision course. And, 
and they're getting in each other's way, really trying to throw hand grenades and shoot at me and everything. And the first guy, he can't believe it. He's shooting point blank at me, and uh, the bullets are hitting my clothes. I could feel them tugging my clothes, and but I didn't get hit. And uh, the, all at once, he panicked and tried to get out of my way because I was going to run right over top of him. The, uh, uh, and, he, and he was trying to claw his way around the guy behind him. And, he, and the other guy, was, the second guy was trying to shoot me, and he was messing him up. And all at once, the whole bunch of them turned and started running. And I was right hot on their tail. And uh, I chased him for a few feet, and I'm bouncing off the trench and really not hitting anybody. So... Uh, I just stopped and raised my carbine and started shooting them in the back of the head, and I just knocked a whole bunch of them down. They, they made the turn in the trench and headed toward two big bunkers I could see. And I, I jumped out of the trench and cut across the hill and got in front of them, and they're rushing, they're running toward the bunkers trying to get away from me, and they're running right into me. And I, I'm shooting, shooting as fast as I can to get them, and, uh, the, uh, but I started running out of ammunition, and, uh, cause I'd, I'd, sh- fired a lot of ammunition by this time and uh, probably a, a ten, 10 magazines of ammunition and you know, a firefight like that you're really burning it up and so I had a, about a magazine and a half left so I started backing up and, and uh, kind of fought my way you know going trying to get back to where I started and uh, I got in I backed up and I jumped in this one trench and uh, the uh, and all at once a Chinaman raised up in front of me and threw a hand grenade at me. And this hand grenade, I thought it was going to hit me right in the face. He hit my hip and dropped down against my foot. And I just shot a Chinaman, and he was laying there right beside of me. And I dove across him to get him between me and the hand grenade. And when the hand grenade went off, instead of blowing my, both of my legs off, it, it blew the heel off one of my boots, part of the heel off the my boot. And I bounced back up, and this guy thought he'd got me, you know, on account of the explosion. And uh, he was kind of on up on his tiptoes looking. And uh, I I finished the rest of my magazine in his stomach, you know, because we were, I'm about 15, 20 feet from him. I shot him in the belly about four or five times. And uh, the uh, I finally, I was sitting there fighting until I, I run out. I didn't have a round of ammunition left, so I turned around and, and uh, w- went back to where I started at the first trench. And some young kid... Uh, one of the young soldiers come running up, and uh, right beside of him with his M1, he was blazing away with the Chinese because they were close. And uh, one of them raised up right in front of us and sprayed us both, and he got hit. He got hit hard and went down. And I turned around and looked at the Chinese, and he turned around. And ran, he just ran. And uh, I picked this kid up and started walking down the down the mountain to where the rest of the men were. And uh, the Chinese, as I said, they were close. They were jumping out of the they were jumping out of the trench and running at me, trying to shoot me and bayonet at me. And this artillery port observer who had already been wounded, uh, he uh, at least he was covered with blood. Uh, he uh, uh, he grabbed an M1 rifle and jumped out in the open and was knocking the Chinese down as they come down around me. And uh, the whole thing, the whole thing, by that time seemed funny to me because uh, all these guys trying to kill me, nobody could do it. And uh, I was laughing by the time I got to him, and uh, he looked up at me. And he knew I was an art or a port observer for Heavy Motor Company, and but he didn't know my name. He said, "Soldier, what's your name?" I said, "Why, well, Lieutenant, my name is Rosser." And he said, uh, "Do you know what you're doing?" I said, "Oh yeah, no, I know that." And uh, he said, "By God, I want to shake your hand." I said, well, "That's the dumbest thing I ever seen. A guy want to shake my hand in the middle of a firefight, but I did it anyhow." And uh, I laughed about it for years, and. Uh, I said, I said, you hold him down, Lieutenant. I'll be back as quick as I can. So I got a bandage on this kid, stopped some of the bleeding, and I scrounged around. I got me about 13, 14, 15 hand grenades, best I could find, and as many magazines as I could for my carbine, and I slung my carbine on my shoulder, uh, took a hand grenade, and my clothes were covered with hand grenades I was carrying, and I took a hand grenade in each hand and pulled the pin. I was holding the spoons down, and I started dog trotting back up the hill, and I passed his lieutenant, and he was still there banging away with that old rifle. And he looked up at me, and I said, I'll see you later, lieutenant. And I went up there by myself after him. And they were lined up in the trench waiting on me. And uh, they were laying right across the trench, you know, with their guns waiting. And uh, uh, they, I don't think they could believe uh, what they were seeing. There's one guy come charging up the hill. I'm just running at him, you know, at a slow run. And uh, they just watched me for about a minute. And all at once, a couple of them started raising up, raising a rifle up, or burp gun up to shoot me. And as soon as they started moving, I threw my hand grenade. And the first hand grenade I threw went right in the trench with them. And when it went off, uh, a few seconds later, I crossed the trench. And there was a bunch of them dead there. And I 
and some of them still wounded. And I just dropped a second hand grenade on them and kept going because I was after these two big bunkers in the middle of middle of this mountain, and they were really big sized bunkers, uh, the kind of troops get into to get away from heavy fire, and uh, and they were deep, and uh, so uh, I shot my way through to these these two bunkers and. Uh, uh, and knocked several Chinese down before I, I got to them. Uh, took a couple hand grenades and you know scattered a bunch of them. The uh, the uh, I run a bunch of these Chinese in these two bunkers. They were trying to get this bunker to get away from my fire. And uh, so I ran up to the first one and ran right into the door and started shooting through the door. But yeah, they were hollering like heck back in there. And uh, so. I got me a white phosphorus grenade out and got beside of the door and reached down and flipped, let the spoon go and uh, and just held it a couple of seconds and flipped it in the door. And when that fire hit them, they were oh, they were screaming something awful. And then I threw in two frags and they stopped screaming. The uh, the just a few feet away was the door of the other bunker, and uh, they were trying to come out the door. And I grabbed my carbine and started shooting at them there. And, and I knocked a couple of them down at the, near the door and chased the rest of them back in the bunker. And again, I did the same thing. I put a white phosphorus grenade through the door and uh, set them on fire and then, and then put, a, and a, put a couple of frags in the door there to, you know, to stop it. And uh, the, I was roving all around this top of this mountain within probably 50 yards or better of the top of this mountain. And it was a, it was a huge mountain. There was a lot of Chinese up on it, but where I was fighting, uh, at any given time, it was only about a couple of hundred. And uh, the, wherever I'd see him, I'd go after him. The, uh, the one guy threw a hand grenade, got me in the shoulder, and uh, he uh, and kind of irritated me some. And I took after him, and uh, he took running. He took running uh, back around the hill there, and I took. Right, I was right out on his trail, and God was going to shoot the barmit. And uh, the, uh, he ran through about twenty Chinese. They weren't all standing right in one spot, but about twenty Chinese. And uh, I just kept right on going. I went right through them too, and sh chased the guy down and shot him. And the Chinese, by that time, the Chinese were coming at me from everywhere. And I pulled the pin on a white phosphorus hand grenade, threw it up in the air, and uh, the it, this stuff comes, fire comes down like rain on them there. And I was trying to take their mind off of me, you know, get them to do something else besides, you know, get after me. And I got the edge on them again. They started running away, and a bunch of them started running, and I had. To, one this one hand grenade there, and I grabbed it, a frag, and I threw it up ahead of them, and a bunch of them run right over top of that thing when it went off. They was, you know, it just they gone, <laughs> and uh, so pretty soon it started, you know, I started firing with, with my carbine too, spraying them with my carbine. Uh, uh, I'm running along on top of the hill, and they're in the trenches around me, and and I'm shooting as they're bobbing up and down in the in the trench trying to get away from me. I'm shooting at whatever sticks up their head or their shoulder or whatever whatever bounces up. I was shooting at it. And I had them all running. They were trying to get away from me. The uh, I finally started running out of ammunition again, and uh, back over I went to the first trench and started down the hill again. Another kid, another kid had broke through there, and a hand grenade got got him, and uh, I was helping him down the hill. And uh, uh, I went by this lieutenant. He's still banging away with that there, with that there rifle. You see, he's still banging away, knocking him down, and uh, and he later on got the Distinguished Service Cross. The uh, I went down and started got the company commander to start ordering an evacuation, get our people together, and uh, get get them out of there. You know, because we were we were going to lose. It was no question in my mind. We were all going we were all going to get killed, and because uh, they would kill the wounded if they got them. And uh, so I gathered up every grenade I could find, and uh, whatever ammunition I could, and and uh, I went back up again. Into the trench line, and the Chinese were, they were everywhere. And I was throwing hand grenades at them as wherever I could throw hand grenades, you know, get them off of us, get them scattered, because they were trying to, they were trying to bunch up and charge us. And uh, so I finally ran out of ammunition again. I went down and uh, hung on to what magazines I had, you know, for the final defense, because I knew they were going to charge down and get us. The uh, by that time we were organized, trying to get organized and get out of there. And we had already started some of the walking wounded, uh, carrying some of the dead and wounded out, and because uh, there was, we were all killed. Everybody was killed, wounded, or missing. The uh, we got them all out before. There was four people we never did find. One of them I ran into later down in Washington. Uh, 
at the dedication of the Korean War Memorial, he had been taken prisoner. The, uh, but uh, we, we went, uh, me and there was a few of us there, start, the wounded, uh, we started going out and picking up our dead and wounded out on the side of the mountain, and they were everywhere, uh, up against the trenches, uh, everywhere. And uh, I was running out picking up these kids and dragging them back. And I ran into one kid uh, about three years ago that he asked me if, he re- if I remembered him. And I said, no, I, I'm sorry. I said, I don't remember you. And he said, uh, he said, well, I was one of the guys you picked up, Mr. Rosser. And I said, really? He said, and he said, I was watching you down there. And he said, uh, I was laying up on a trench and Chinese trench and they were, they were shooting right over me. And he said, and he said, I've been hit twice to the chest. And he said, I knew that I was going to die. And he said, I knew nobody could get to me. And he said, all at once I seen you coming. And he said, you run right up under the gun he said, and grab you by the back of the coat and said, let's get the heck out of here, boy. And I started dragging him down the mountain. And this kid, I had him by the back of the, by the, back of the collar and dragging him. And he was looking right at the enemy, and they were just a few feet away. And they were shooting point blank at us and not hitting us. I, don't, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, you could get away with that kind of stuff. And uh, the, uh, I got him back under cover and... and he was looking at me real funny, and I said, See, I told you there wasn't nothing to this stuff. And I uh, got, yeah, got him patched up a little bit, and I said, Okay. I said, Can you walk? And he said, I think I can. And I said, Well, you, you get a hold of somebody else and help him down the mountain. He said, Okay. So we had a trail of men going down the mountain, wounded and everything. And uh, even the seriously wounded were dragging dead people with them as they went down. And uh, so a bunch of us, we just got together, and, and those people that couldn't move, we drug them down the mountain. And... Uh, they they brought in a tank platoon and a and another and an INR platoon to help us out and uh, get to help us get us out of there and uh, so these guys uh, put out a base of fire for us to get get under and me and these other boys there we but kept going up and down this mountain and it's fifteen hundred feet high and very you know very rugged mountain go back up there getting these these men and dragging them down three or four men would hold would hold what was left, you know, while we dragged the rest of them down a the mountain until we finally, we finally got them all down a mountain, uh, and, uh, ended the mission. The, uh, uh, nobody was more surprised than me when they, they recommended me for the Medal of Honor. I frankly didn't even, wasn't even sure what it was. The, uh, when I, when I got my citation, uh, it kind of surprised me because, uh, you know, it, it only, it only said what these other men saw. It, uh, none of them made it up into the top of the mountain with me. And, uh, so, uh, I have a great deal of satisfaction that, that I was able to save all these men. Uh, I did what I set out to do. And, uh, the, uh, uh, and I come out of it, you know, without too much trouble. You know, uh, uh, too badly when I was hit twice that day in the hand and the shoulder. Uh, but it wasn't the kind of thing you worry about. Uh, that's about it.